Over the last 10 years, myself and a couple of others, uh, John Franklin and Erwin Muehlwick, if you've heard of him from uh, Holland, have actually spent our time going on the archives trying to find new material. I thought I'd find enough for one book. As you can see, I found lots more. Between us all, we have actually brought over 500 new accounts of the Battle of Waterloo into the general domain in the last 10 years. Now, when I tell you that the Battle of Waterloo and the history of it for the last 190 years has been written on about 250 versions, we now have 750, you can imagine the amount of change that has brought to our understanding of the battle. I have picked out <coughs> the best part of 50 odd items which I can talk about, which at the end of the day are new revelations on Waterloo that have come out in the last 10 years. Was Marshal Ney actually executed in 1815? Well, he was actually taken to the observatory on the 7th of December in 1815. So, you think, it was straightforward, 7th of December, he was shot. Um, you think, well, that's the end of it, isn't it? But I, there was an American lady, by the sounds of it, that actually called him back a question out, and it may well have something to do with the fact that, according to Moxville, North Carolina, Marshal Ney died there in 1846. And you wonder how that could happen. Well, first of all, I'd say to you is that as soon as he died, if he died, at the observatory, the first thing everyone who witnessed it said, isn't it strange, having been struck by so many bullets, that he actually fell forward, not was forced backwards. And this started immediately a question as to whether he'd really died. There have been many claims that uh, he was secreted away. The Wellington was a, uh, a fellow member of the Masons and it helped to get, rid get him out of the country. That they had a pig's bladder of uh, sort of blood and pretended he died, he just broke it as he fell onto the floor and that he was then taken away by the guards and secreted off to America. Now the reason why that comes out is because in 1817 a chap appears in America called Peter Ney. He appears out of nowhere. He then disappears again and then reappears again a few years later and starts working in Moxville as a teacher. And what they notice is the fact that he's an ex expert so, uh, swordsman. He actually speaks about eight languages, European languages, which in fact Marshall Ney did. He had many injuries on his body that were similar to those that recorded on Marshall Ney. And in fact, it became a bit of a story that he was actually nay in hiding. I have to say, uh, although when he was buried, they actually didn't say, this is Marshal Ney, uh, when they actually put the, a, a soldier of Napoleon's army, uh, hedging their bets, I guess. Uh, really, at the end of the day, if you look into the actual background to it, I have to say that Peter Ney appears to have been a Scot, not a Frenchman. And I have to say, he also appears to have been a bit of an Anastasia-type person who, I believe, in the end of the day, started to believe his own statements. Because on his deathbed, he did actually, according to some reports, state, I am Marshal Ney, I cannot lie any longer. Uh, but I have to say, uh, my, my opinion is that, to be honest, this is an Anastasia-type character who appeared later. There is absolutely no evidence that Ney was not shot on that day. Uh, in fact, the early newspaper <coughs> reports of the same day don't just say he took five shots to the body, they say he took three to the head. Now, I'm not that much of an expert, but I think it's quite difficult to actually hide bullet mark bullets in your head as, as actual fake injuries at that time. But that's my view of it at the end of the day. I think that unfortunately the, the chap in Moxville was never Marshal May.